Preface Satan has a plan for a one-world religion and a one-world government. How do we know this? It is revealed in Bible prophecy. If we examine God's word closely and contrast its prophecies with the events transpiring around us, we come to a most astonishing conclusion. The last years of the 20th century may well compromise one of the final chapters in the age-old battle between the powers of evil and God and his people. The Bible envisions a period of increasing rebellion against God culminating in the Great Tribulation, a frightening time of worldwide brutality and religious apostasy. During this period, the nations of Earth will be transformed into a one-world political system and religion. This will be accomplished according to the plan of the dark forces that oppose God. In my book, Rush to Armageddon, I stated, Powerful forces are swirling around mankind today. Forces that are destined to bring about a profound change in both our physical and spiritual worlds. Man cannot avoid those forces no more than he could avoid being brought forth into this world and having breath entered into his lungs. In this present book, I closely examine these powerful forces and with God's help expose their evil's objectives, or the evil objectives. The Bible warned us about these forces. For example, Daniel, one of the Lord's great prophets, foresaw that in the last days Satan would install a world ruler. This ruler, Daniel said, would magnify himself above all while contempt contemptuously disregarding the laws of God. In place of the true God, this evil ruler will honor the God of forces. Dan 11.36.45 Even now, a man is perhaps being groomed to be this world ruler. I do not know when he will come forth, though the time must surely be drawing near based on current events. However, after years of research into the objectives of the New Age movement, I am convinced of one thing. This man of Satan, called the Beast with the number 666 in Revelation, will find already in place a popularly acclaimed one world religion perfectly suited for his style of leadership. The Antichrist will therefore find great satisfaction in assuming the reins of the New Age world religion. If this statement shocks you, that is understandable. It is best for us to be very skeptical about claims that this or that group or church is the Satan-led end-time religion prophesied in the Holy Bible. God wants us to be discerning. What's more, having a scientific orientation and with my background as a career Air Force officer, I am not prone to hasty, ill-considered judgments or snap decisions, especially about important spiritual matters. This is why I decided to investigate for myself by thoroughly researching the New Age movement, its roots, and its activities and goals. What I discovered staggers the imagination. The New Age movement has undeniably taken on the definite form of a religion, complete with an agreed-upon body of doctrine, printed scripture, a pattern of worship and ritual, a functioning group of ministers and lay leaders, and an effective outreach program carried out by an active core of proselytizing believers. Furthermore, because of its astonishing success in attracting new followers, the New Age Church now has a large and growing membership worldwide. Its avowed aim, however, is to become the only world religion. In a free marketplace of ideas, it is perfectly acceptable that a religion strive to convert others to its belief system. This is as true of the New Age world religion as it is for Christianity, but the horrible truth about the New Age is that its leaders do not wish to freely compete with Christianity. They seek to destroy Christianity. New Age leaders know that only if they are able to under undermine credibility in the Bible, discredit Jesus Christ, and weaken the example of Christian churches can they succeed in their ultimate objective. The ascension to power of a New Age Messiah, the Antichrist and the establishment of a one world order. At the pinnacle of this one world order will be the religious system described in Revelation 17. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. To accomplish its insidious and perverse objectives, the leaders of this new religion have set forth a new age plan, which they call the divine plan or simply the plan, designed by none other than the master of deceit himself. Satan. 
You should know, if you are a Christian, a biblical Christian who believes in the inspired word of God, that you are, prim you are a primary target of the plan. In fact, the only thing that stands between Satan and the successful implementation of this horrible lawless plan for humanity is you and millions of other determined Christians throughout the world. This is why the subversion and conquest of Christianity is the number one priority for those involved in carrying out the plan. Who will prevail? As we look at the New Age with our Bibles open and plainly recognize its darker side, our minds grow numb. But finally we recognize this movement for what it truly is. A sense of mounting horror grips us as we understand that this is almost certainly the end time harlot church prophesied in the Bible. Our hearts sag because it is evident the plan has made startling progress toward fulfillment. The New Age world of religion has already become the fastest growing religious movement on earth. In the parable of the wheat and the tares, Matthew 13, 24, 30, Jesus taught that evil would grow and grow, intermingling with the good until the time of the harvest. Evil will not gradually disappear before good, but will ever develop and ripen until its highest manifestation in the last days. When we surveyed the damage to souls being caused by New Age doctrines and the incredible popularity of these doctrines, it is difficult not to view this development with alarm. However, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 Basic to our sound mind is the knowledge that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. See 1 John 4.4 4. The rise to power of an evil antichrist and the move toward a dominant one world religion is no surprise to God's people. His prophets told us everything that was to come. What is needed today is revival, a revival of the power of God on earth. Satan cannot withstand this, and his New Age world religion shrinks before it. May each of us, may each one of us be an instrument of the supernatural power. As one of God's great 20th century spiritual leaders, the late pastor Gresham Mackin wrote, God has brought his church through many perils, and the darkest hour has often preceded the dawn, so it may be in our day. The gospel may yet break forth sooner than we expect to bring light and liberty to mankind, but that will be done by the instrumentality, not of theological pacifists who avoid controversy, but of earnest contenders for the faith. God give us men in our time who will stand with Luther and say, Here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. Tex Mars, Austin, Texas. Chapter 1 The Plan We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6.12 A world religion for the new age is needed to meet the needs of thinking people and to unify mankind. Lola Davis Toward a World Religion for the New Age in a stunningly brief period of time, a new and powerful world religion has, slept, has swept across America and the entire planet. Popularly called the New Age Movement by its own leaders, this new religion is rapidly and dramatically reshaping man's views of God and the universe. Claiming to represent a radical new global culture, the New Age world religion denies the existence of a personal God who loves his own while it exalts human potential and scientific progress. Its leaders point out that they are forerunners of the New Age Messiah, a great superhuman world teacher and leader who is soon to come. He will, they have declared, establish a glorious kingdom of man on earth in which all men will live in peace, harmony, and unity. Possessing unparalleled wisdom and knowledge, and unwielding marvelous psychic abilities, all the powers of the universe will be at his command. The Fantastic Drawing Power of the New Age The New Age world religion holds great appeal for modern man. New Age author and researcher Marilyn Ferguson, publisher of Brain Mind Bulletin, says that New Age believers come from all levels of income and education. 
Among them, she lists school teachers and office workers, famous scientists, government officials and lawmakers, artists and millionaires, taxi drivers and celebrities, leaders in medicine, education, law, and psychology. She also says there are New Age advocates in corporations, universities, public schools, and even on the White House staff. As Ferguson states, the New Age world religion is strongly supported by influential leaders from every realm, realm of our culture. These include such personages as singer John Denver, former astronaut Edgar Mitchell, former University of Notre Dame head Theodore Hesburgh, former Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany Willer Brandt, science fiction writer Isaac Asimov, physicist Fritjof Capra, Megatrends author John Naisbitt, and actress Shirley MacLaine. Just as Hitler was able to inspire both the intellectual elite and the masses, the spirit of the New Age has taken in millions of men and women from all economic and social categories and from all walks of life. Even supposed ministers of the Christian faith, inclusive, it welcomes those of every political persuasion, liberal or conservative and those from practically every ethnic group. What's more, it extends an invitation to those in all religions, holding itself up as the world's one great religious arbiter, a single beacon of light in which all religions can experience unity. The clarion call of the New Age to other religions is, come on, let us be one. The growth of the New Age world religion is truly phenomenal and reveals how close we are to the last days. Only a decade ago, many viewed the New Age movement as an assemblage of sordid nuts and weird hippie-like personalities. In the years since, the New Age has matured into a monstrously enlarged religion and social movement that threatens to swallow up all other religions, philosophies, and social systems. John Randolph Price, head of two major New Age groups, the Quartus Foundation for Spiritual Research and the Planetary Commission for Global Healing, claims that more than half a billion New Age believers are on the planet at this time working in various religious groups. Boastfully, he adds, New Thought, New Age concepts are spreading more rapidly than any other spiritual teaching. From witches to humanists and scientists. The reasons for such growth are obvious. Until now, most cults, mystery religions, and splinter churches attempted to be exclusive and only to a select few. But the New Age world religion is unlike any other apostate church or pagan cult the Christian world has confronted since the days of the early church. The New Age is universal open arms religion that excludes from its ranks only those who believe in Jesus Christ and a personal God. Buddhists, Shintoists, Satanists, secular humanists, witches, witch doctors, and shamans, all who reject Christianity are invited to become trusted members of the New Age family. Worshippers of separate faiths and denominations are to be unified in a common purpose, the glorification of man. While pagans and occultists openly declare themselves to be New Agers, the religion is also broad-based enough to include those in the most respectable professions. As I mentioned in Rush to Armageddon, the New Age doctrine combines the worst of modern psychology, so-called progressive education, medicine, science, and economics in a dangerous and new formulation perfectly, per- perfectly compatible with the abominations of paganism and occultism. New Age professionals claim that this is a high religion, more attuned to the needs of thinking people than Christianity, which they deem outmoded and unsophisticated. They are drawn to the New Age belief that man is himself an evolving God and that the greatest love of all is self-love. The essence of New Age religious doctrine is that man is neither sinful nor evil and that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was meaningless and futile. Man did not need a savior to atone for sins, for sins, says the New Age, because man has for millennia been inevitably evolving toward perfection and godhood. Predictably, a religious philosophy that deifies man is totally void of absolute moral restraints is extremely attractive to those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal savior. In a world rampant with sin and unethical conduct, a world divided of the agape love that is in Christ Jesus, the New Age sadly has become a narcissistic religion that readily finds converts.
Understanding the New Age Vocabulary Being the earthly emissaries of another gospel and another Christ, leaders of the New Age are expert in the application of confusing and deceitful terminology when Satan's representatives use such familiar Christian terms as God, Christ, Messiah, the Second Coming, Born Again, Salvation, Angel, Heaven and Hell, and the Kingdom of God. Their meaning is radically different than that, than that in the Word of God. In addition, the New Ager often uses terms, phrases, and euphemisms totally unfamiliar to all but persons who have studied esoteric doctrine. Again, the intent is to cloud and obscure the true meaning from the uninitiated. Below are several Christian terms that the New Age has twisted and perverted, along with a few terms unique to the New Age lexicon. I have taken the liberty of revealing the hidden New Age meaning of each. God, an impersonal energy force, imminent in all things. To the New Age, God can be referred to either as she or he, mother or father, god or goddess. Most New Age teachers hold that Mother Earth, the sun, the moon, and the stars, indeed all of nature, can be worshipped as God. Christ, a reincarnated avatar, messiah, or messenger sent from the hierarchy to give the living on Earth spiritually advanced revelation. The New Age contends that Buddha, Muhammad, Confucius, Jesus, and many others were Christs, but one greater than all of them will soon come to usher in the New Age. To the Christian, this coming New Age Christ is in fact the Antichrist. Angels, more frequently called Ascended Masters, Masters of Wisdom, Ancient Masters, Spirit Guides, Inner Guides, Spirit Counselors, One's Higher Self, The Self, Super Beings, Eons, Muses, or Walkins, collectively called the Hierarchy. Whichever term is used, the discerning Christian will recognize these shadowy entities not as angels, but as demons. Born Again, Rebirth. Personal or Planetary Transformation and Healing. The point at which a New Ager believe, believer lets go and allows his higher self or inner guide translated demon to guide and direct his life. Some New Agers describe this as Kundalini, a Hindu term meaning serpent power, a moment of instant rebirth when the recipient is said to be transformed by a flash of light, receiving the benefit of higher consciousness as well as greater spiritual awareness and wisdom. Such a rebirth is said to convey Christ consciousness on the individual. The Second Coming The New Age assigns two definitions to this phrase, each of which subverts the true meaning of the Second Coming of Jesus prophesied in the Bible. First, it is claimed that the Second Coming, a New Age believer achieves Christ consciousness, an exalted higher state in which he is spiritually transformed into a divine being. This phrase also can mean the appearance on earth of the New Age Messiah or Christ and his hierarchy of demons from the spirit world, heaven slash kingdom of God. The terms heaven and kingdom of God are often indistinguishable to the New Ager. Each refers to a spiritually cleansed and purified earth in which mankind has achieved Christ consciousness and has become akin to God kind. The New Age or Aquarian Age is expected to be the era when heaven and the kingdom of God are realized on earth. The reincarnated Christ the Antichrist is to reign over the New Age, bringing in a world, one world religion and consolidating all nations into one monolithic government. Hell. New Agers deny the existence of a hell and a judgment. They also deny that sin and evil exist. God is alleged to be beyond good and evil, neither of which is a relevant term to the New Age. Understanding the special definitions assigned Christian words and phrases by New Age leaders, we see the subtle deceit and confusion they employ. With this in mind, let's examine Satan's plan for our world. The Plan Exposed When we analyze the plan for the New Age, as publicly expressed by its own leadership, we cannot avoid the horrible conclusion that this apostate religion is demonic. The astonishing truth is that the New Age world religion fits all of the criteria of the Babylonian harlot church of the latter days. Revelation 17 reveals this is a satanic religious system that just prior to the second coming of our Lord Jesus shall rule peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues and shall be full of abominations and filthiness 
led by the beast who ascends out of the bottomless pit, it will be at its core the mirror image of the mystery religion established by the founders of ancient Babylon. To bring this prophesied anti-God religious system to reality in the last days, Satan has concocted a 13-point master plan called simply The Plan by New Age leaders. Here is that chilling plan for world domination. Point number one. The principal aim of the plan is to establish a one world New Age religion and a one world political and social order. Point two. The New Age world religion will be a revival of the idolatrous religion of ancient Babylon in which mystery cults, sorcery and occultism, and immortality or immorality flourished. Point three. The plan is to come to fullness when the New Age Messiah, the Antichrist with the number 666, comes in the flesh to lead the unified New Age world religion and oversee the new one world order. Point four. The spirit guides, demons, will help man inaugurate the new age and will pave the way for the Antichrist, the new age man-god, to be acclaimed by humanity as the great world teacher. Point five. World peace, love, and unity will be the rallying cries of the new age world religion. Point six. New age teachings are to be taught and propagated in every sphere of society around the globe. Point seven. New Age leaders and believers will spread the apostasy that Jesus is neither God nor the Christ. Point number eight. Christianity and all other religions are to become integral parts of the New Age world religion. Point nine. Christian principles must be discredited and abandoned. Point ten. Children will be spiritually seduced and indoctrinated and the classroom used to promote New Age dogma. Point eleven. Flattery will be employed to entice the world into believing that man is a divine god. Point 12. Science and the New Age world religion will become one. Point number 13. Christians who resist the plan will be dealt with. If necessary, they will be exterminated and the world purified. The plan has such tremendous consequences for mankind and for Christianity that we cannot neglect to take stock of what is going on before our eyes. Every Christian man and woman must face up to the harsh reality that there is, in fact, a New Age plan for a one world religion and a one world government. The Main Event New Age leaders maintain that we are on the threshold of a new order, that this is the Great Awakening, the dawning of the New Age. And all agree that the plan will bring everything to pass. Vera Alder writes, There is actually a plan and a purpose behind all creation. World unity is the goal towards evolution, which evolution is a moving. World unity is the goal towards which evolution is moving. The world plan includes a world organization, a world economy, a world religion. John Randolph Price has said that the plan centerpiece, the main event as he calls it, will be the coming of the New Age Christ and the building of the kingdom on earth to be accomplished by a new race of godmen. A gathering is taking place, New Age believers, and all religions are uniting again, this time in a new commission to reveal the light of the world and begin the Aquarian Age of spirituality on planet Earth. The revolution has begun, the pace is quickening, throughout the world men and women are joining in the uprising and rising up, and are coming forward to be counted as part of a new race that will someday rule the universe. Now we can co-create the future according to the divine plan. According to Price, the plan includes the elimination of fear, the dissolving of false beliefs, and the erasing of karmic debts in each individual soul. Price says that in sin need not disqualify you. There is no such thing as a lost soul, for every soul is a page in the master plan. M. E. Hazelhurst, writing for the Lucius Trust, emphasizes that the plan is positive and concerned with rebuilding mankind. To those who doubt the plan exists, he declares, Humanity needs to realize that there is a plan and to recognize its influence in unfolding world events, even when these appear as hindering factors operating by means of destruction. What does Hazelhurst mean when he speaks of rebuilding mankind and hints of hindering factors operating by means of destruction? As we'll see in later chapters, New Age spokesmen teach that the earth must soon undergo chaos through the purification process and Christians are at the top of the New Age list of those to be purified. The concept of purification was perhaps once elaborated by Meishu Sama, a New Age pioneer from Japan, 
Sama reportedly meandered from atheism to Shintoism and a New Age philosophy. In 1931, at the age of 45, he was given a revelation that disclosed to him God's divine plan for the New Age. He supposedly learned that humanity is to go through a great transitional period, turning from the old age of darkness to the new age of light. During this transitional period, those with negative vibrations will be removed from the earth in an earth-shaken purification process. This removal from the earth of those who rebel against the coming new age ruled order will evidently be supervised by a messiah, who many in the new age believe to be the, world, the Lord Maitreya. What is the plan? It includes the installation of a new world government and the new world religion under Maitreya. David Spangler claims he has communicated a number of times with this new age messiah. In his communications with Spangler, this, this spirit calls himself John, or limitless love and truth. This demon spirit has indeed verified that a plan is being rapidly implemented, declaring, I present to you, therefore, the revelation of man's destiny, for behold, I have placed my seal upon this planet. Spangler's Demon Guide also contends that the plan is concerned with rebuilding mankind after a cleansing of the earth through the eradication of negative forces. This is, nary, this is necessary, claims the demonic spirit, to bring in a joyous new heaven and a new earth. This is the message of revelation. We are now the builders of a new age. We are called upon to embark on a creative project in order to reveal the new heaven and rebuild the new earth. One new age organization that has publicly stated its endorsement of the plan is the new age, the new group of world servers. A group intensely dedicated to a new one world government and a one world religion. The new group of world servers says of its members they believe in an inner world government and an emerging evolutionary plan. The group's official statement of purpose includes these four objectives. 1. Bring about world peace, guide world destiny and usher in the new age. 2. Form the vanguard for the reappearance of the Christ and his disciples, the masters of wisdom. 3. Recognize and change those aspects of religion and government which delay, delay the full manifestation of planetary unity and love. 4. Provide a center of light within humanity and hold the vision of the divine plan before mankind. Barry McWaters, founder and co-director of the Institute for the Study of Conscious Evolution, attributes the goal of evolution to the intelligence that created the plan. McWaters, who terms this intelligence, actually Satan, the higher will, provides this quote from the book, The Rainbow Bridge. Evolution is the response to the call of, log of Logos, of God. It is a purpose behind the plan. It is God's drawing of creation back to himself. According to McWaters, man is evolving toward union with the universe as planned by the higher will, or becoming a little God serving a greater God, the planet Earth, or Gaia. New Age leaders have begun to publicize previously hidden aspects of the new plan. Alice Bailey has said that her hidden masters told her that the beginning in 1975 the time would be ripe for open propagation of the plan. This same demonic message may have been telepathically given to the New Age leaders as well, for a flood of information has poured forth about the plan. Still, there are apparently some elements of the plan that are disclosed only to an inner circle. George Christie, formerly a communications executive and now with the internationalist group, the International Center for Integrative Studies, ICS, has intimated that some aspects of the plan should be kept from the public. Asked about the work of the ICS at a meeting of the Lucius Trust, Christie defensively remarked, now we don't publish it. It's not in our literature. You're not going to find it there. It's not right out there. You're not going to find it. When a participant inquired about the plan, Christie grew even more guarded, offering only the cryptic comment, Now when you speak of the plan, capital P, I, of course, probably think the same thing as most of you do here. When will the plan be realized? New Age leaders have said that the plan is progressing extremely well. The final stage, the materialization of a heaven on earth presided over by their Christ, is said to be on the immediate horizon. Some project the year 2000 as the key date for the appearance of the Christ and his hierarchy. Others believe that this cardinal event is imminent and may occur at any time. 
In the interim, they continued to work the plan, educate believers, and bring into the fold thousands of new converts. They also worked to spread insidious, often subtle propaganda throughout the media praising the New Age world religion and its objectives. The way is being prepared for the Antichrist. Lola Davis speaks of these preparations in her pivotal book, Toward a World Religion for the New Age. The good news is that there is already much activity toward required actions and conditions and that an increasingly increasing number of people are either consciously or unconsciously preparing mankind for a world religion that's compatible with the new age. Davis explains that the plan cannot be fully realized until the new age Christ or Messiah comes. The leadership of the Messiah is the catalyst needed to materialize the new age kingdom. After his arrival, the new age Messiah will help mankind learn to cooperate consciously with God's plan for the peace and well-being of the world. We will have, before the total program is in place, the guidance of the Avatar or Messiah. John Randolph Price echoes Davis confidently proclaiming, This new age will be. A new heaven on earth will be. Preparations are being made now. And out of chaos will come the beginning of peace on earth, a new order for mankind. An effective leader. Prince rallies his faithful around the call to preach the New Age Gospel to the world so the plan will come quickly be realized, will more quickly be realized. For you to be an effective member of the Planetary Commission, you should understand your role in the implementation of the Divine Plan. Yes, the salvation of the world does depend on you. Terry Cole Whitaker, a flamboyant New Age minister from California whose television ministry and best-selling books brought her international fame and success, intimated recently in an interview with Magical Blend magazine that the world is very close to the day when the New Age will suddenly arrive in all its splendor. I feel that we are right on the edge and we are going to pop into a new dimension. Everybody senses it. The Real Plan The God of the Bible also has a plan for mankind. I would like to call it The Real Plan. John wonderfully summarized this divine plan with these momentous words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that so whoever believeth in him should, should not perish, but have everlasting love. John 3.16 Amen. God's plan was that his crucified Son, Jesus, would rise from the dead, ascend to heaven, and be our mediator and our savior. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. 1 Timothy 2, 5, 6. The real plan designed by the only God there is will be completed only when Jesus Christ returns to earth with a shout descending in glory from out of the clouds. He will judge the living and the dead and reign as Lord of Lords and King of Kings forever and ever. See 1 Thess- Thessalonians 4, 13, Revelation, Revelation 19, 11 through 21, 21, and 22. Then and only then, after the second coming of Jesus Christ, will peace and harmony envelop the globe. The best news about God's real plan is that salvation through Jesus Christ is intended for all. Unfortunately, the vast majority rebel against God and His plan, falling victim to the great lie. That lie is incorporated in another plan, drafted by the New Age movement under direct command from Satan. The New Age plan of Lucifer is in mark, marked contrast to that of God's. It calls for another gospel and another Christ. It falsely promises a reprobate humanity, a quantum leap in consciousness that will result in man's becoming a god. Satan's plan seductively offers prosperity and peace to a world hungry for material goods and fearful of nuclear destruction. The deceptive plan of Satan is finding great favor in the world today. New Age leaders tell us that it is destined to succeed. The Bible prophesied that this evil plan would for a time win out. Dan 11.24 But in the end, Satan and all those who become embroiled in his dark plan will end tragically, going down to resounding defeat. Until the day when Christ returns and Satan's plan is defeated, the world will experience a terrible period of untold misery and horror. Satan's Antichrist, the beast with the number 666, will establish his malignant reign over all nations and peoples, and Christians will be severely persecuted for their beliefs. 
the prophesied one world religion the global church of Satan will demand and get obedience from everyone on earth except the people who make up the church of the living God. Chapter 2 Mystery Babylon Satan's Church Yesterday and Today And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs. Revelation 17, 5, 6 Christianity came face to face with the Babylonian paganism in its various forms that had been established in the Roman Empire. Much persecution resulted. Many Christians were falsely accused, thrown at the lions, burned at the stake, and in other ways tortured and martyred. Over the centuries, God has called his people out of the bondage of Babylon. Still today his voice is saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. Ralph Woodrow, Babylon, Mystery Religion The scriptures reveal that from the time Satan rebelled and was banished to earth, two churches have existed on the planet. God's true church is described as the chaste bride of Christ, a pure woman without blemish, redeemed by the sacrifice of God's Son Jesus. Ephesians 5.27 Revelation 19.7-8 The opposing world church is likened to a defiled woman, a drunken whore. She has on her forehead the revealing title, Mystery, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. In her hand is a golden cup full of the filthiness of her fornications. This is the church of Satan. God has determined that his church be preserved until the second coming of his son, Jesus, at, the, at which time Satan and his followers will be destroyed. But Satan, knowing he has only a short time until his fiery judgment, seeks all the temporal pleasures that counterfeit godhood can bestow on him. So, is he, so he is determined that the evil mystery religion he first set up in Babylon now grow and expand. More than 70 years ago, Anglican Bishop Alexander Hislop observed that Satan has worked hard over the centuries on behalf of the Babylonian mystery religion that serves as his church. Again and again has power been arrayed against it, but here there too, every obstacle it has surmounted, every difficulty it has overcome. Cyrus, Xerxes, and many of the Medo-Persian kings banished its priests from Babylon and labored to root it out of their empire. But then it found a secure retreat in Pergamos, and Satan's seat was erected there. The glory of Pergamos and the cities of Asia Minor departed, but the worship of the Queen of Heaven, Satan's false goddess, did not wane. It took a higher flight and seated itself on the throne of the Imperial Rome. Hislop went on to explain how the Babylonian mystery religion continually rose above all attempts to put it down. The early Roman Catholic Church, for example, incorporated many of its elements into Catholic doctrine and worship. Mystery Babyl Babylon lived on. As we survey the world around us today, we find that Mystery Babylon has again reared her ugly head. She has healed her wound and now invites all the world to partake of her drunkenness and her fornication. Shamelessly, she claims to be the one and only true church. She calls herself the New Age World Religion. But this modern day scarlet woman's real name is Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Modern Babylon. The remarkable parallels between the Mystery Religion and cults of Babylon and the New Age religion provide definitive proof that these two anti-God religious systems are in fact one and the same. Here is just a partial list of the religious practices and rituals and the doctrinal, doctrinal beliefs mutually embraced by the Babylon of yesterday and today. Man-God doctrine, karma, self-love, reincarnation, numerology, psychic mind powers, levitation, astral travel, hypnotism, shamanism, nature slash earth worship, magic words or mantras, decrees, goddess worship, palmistry, fire worship, occult visualization, sexual licentiousness, necromancy, astrology, evolution doctrine, divination, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, occult meditation, occult symbolism, mystery teachings and initiation altered states of consciousness. 
These perverse doctrines and practices begun by the mighty Babylonian king Nimrod and his evil queen Semiramis were in much evidence in the days of Abraham. The sensuously beautiful Semiramis grew to be worshipped as mother goddess, the central figure in a satanic trinity composed of the father, Nimrod, the mother, Semiramis, and their son, also named Nimrod. In the Babylonian religion, Nimrod and Semiramis were thought to be the first of the man-gods, spiritually powerful reincarnated, reincarnated souls whose superwills catapulted them to exalted status as deities. Similarly, in today's New Age doctrine, man is depicted as evolving toward divinity through successive reincarnations and psychic willpower. Semiramis was a supremely wicked woman, declaring herself the Queen of Heaven. She demanded blood sacrifices and instituted temple prostitution. Following her death, word of her mystical exploits spread and her dark fame grew. The Babylonian Empire was able to dominate much of the world culturally, economically, and militarily. As a result, the Babylonian religious system also spread. Soon, Semiramis was worshipped throughout the known world as Ishtar and Astarte in Babylon, as Ashira and Ashtaroth in Israel and Canaan, as Diana and Artemis in Ephesus and Asia Minor, as Cybele in Roman, Isis in Egypt, Gaia in Greece, and Kali in India. Her husband and son were also worshipped as gods, again under a variety of names. In Israel, Nimrod was venerated as Baal. In Egypt, he was called Osiris and his son Horus. The perverted Babylonian mystery religion, mocking the Holy Trinity, taught that the mother-father, the father-mother-son aspects of the Godhead were se- separate deities, but also were united as one. Therefore, in Egypt, Ra, the sun god, was worshipped as a combined male and female androgynous unisex god. This has significant implication for today's New Age world religion. For example, there is now modern-day revival of the worship of the mother goddess, especially by feminist New Agers. This explains why, although the Bible clearly prophesies that the Antichrist will be a man, many in the New Age have actually begun to worship the mother goddess, who they claim to have reawakened from her long sleep during the past two millennia of Christendom. Some New Age feminists go so far as to claim that their coming Christ will be the reincarnated goddess who physically reigned during the Babylonian era. New Age proponents of witchcraft are especially active in the revival of the Babylonian goddess mystery religion. Miriam Starhawk, a prominent witch, is president of the Covenant of the Goddess, a union of the New Age, pagan, and goddess traditions officially recognized as a church in California. Starhawk and other witches of the official church of Wicca, the Wise Ones, have been invited by feminist organizations and even by Catholic priests and nuns to present their teachings. Starhawk, in in a recent interview, said of the growing belief by the New Age and the Goddess, Mother Goddess is reawakening and we can begin to recover our primal birthright, the sheer intoxicating joy of being alive. We can open our eyes and see that there is nothing to be safe from, no God outside the world to be feared and obeyed. Worship of the Mother Goddess is also prevalent in such churches as Unitary and Unitarian. The Unity Church teaches, for example, that God is, man is. We are now in the presence of that eternal is-ness. Osiris and and Isis are now our mother father as fully as they were of old Egypt. A number of prominent feminist leaders today encourage women to abandon Christianity and Judaism in favor of the worship of Isis or another goddess from Babylonian origination. One of the tarot cards, the high priestess, depicts Isis. Feminist writer Kathleen Alexander Berghorn illuminates us on the current campaign to revive the ancient goddess religion for modern-day women. Women. Today, women are rediscovering Isis. The reawakening of Isis as a source of inspiration for contemporary women is exemplified by the healing ministry of Selena Fox, co-founder and high priestess of Circle Sanctuary near Madison, Wisconsin. 
Every month at the new moon, Selena holds a spiritual healing circle centered around an Isis healing altar. Each of us can personally experience the healing presence of the goddess within us. All women are Isis, and Isis is all women. Lucifer and the Babylonian New Age Sun God As a child, I marveled when I read that some primitive peoples actually worshipped the moon, the sun, the stars, and the earth as gods. Today I marvel that many in the New Age have revived this same primitive worship. Added is the concept that Lucifer was sent from the sun god to bring man the truths of the New Age. The symbol of Unity Village, a New Age community in Missouri with the worldwide ministry, is a Babylonian temple with the sun hovering above it. This is appropriate because in the mystery cults, the Babylonian deities were popularized as the sun god. Today, the New Age gods hold the sun to be a divine living being, often called the Solar Father. Lucifer is claimed by the New Age to be the Solar Logos word, a god spirit anointed by the Solar Father to usher in the New Age through the Luciferic initiation of humanity. We will examine this twisted Luciferian doctrine of the New Age more thoroughly in a later chapter. Satan's Final Act The Revival of the Babylonian Mystery Religion The Bible tells us that there will be massive apostasy during the last church age. The vast majority of people will fall prey to the doctrines of demons. False prophets and false Christs will seduce people's minds and initiate them into the mystery of iniquity. 2 Thessalonians 2 7. Babylon will be revived as a worldwide religious and political system headed by the Antichrist. Then the Great Tribulation period will occur, a time of universal bloodshed and persecution. Are we at the threshold of this brutal period of bloodshed and turmoil? Are we soon to see a one-world religion and a one-world government headed by a satanically inspired antichrist? Literally hundreds of hours of research and prayer convinced me that the answer can only be in the affirmative. I am not alone in this conclusion. Hal Lindsey recently told mem- listeners of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, TBN, we now have a movement that is unparalleled in history called the New Age. This movement is preparing the way for the Antichrist rapidly. The religious deception is here. Paul Crouch, president of TBN, remarked, The octopus tentacles of the New Age movement go directly to the great deceiver himself, the devil. Other Christian leaders have expressed much the same sentiments. Pat Robertson and his 700 Club have discussed the New Age movement. Constance Cumbie stated in her best-selling Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow that the New Age fulfills all the prophetic requirements of the Babylonian harlot church of the last days. Dave Hunt wrote of this modern-day descendant of Babylon's mystery religion and his powerful peace, prosperity, and the coming Holocaust. Evangelists Jimmy Swaggart and David Wilkerson have expressed their intense concern. The New Age could well be the last age. Babylon has sprung back to life in the form of the New Age movement. Satan's day is at hand. The Prince of Darkness is apparently ready to unveil his bloody plan. In doing so, mankind will be hurled with magnum force into a boiling cauldron as the final chapter ensues in the battle between the forces of evil and God and his people. The Spiritual Warfare Raging Today If you are a Christian, you're on the front line of battle, and there's no way out. You'll either have to see this war through and come out on the other end victorious, or through your inaction, you will become an accomplice in Satan's plan. The fact is, once you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, Satan declared war on you. Now you are accounted by him as a sheep to slaughter. The leaders of the New Age world religion are Satan's generals and admirals. In concert with their demon advisors, these... Men and women have already drawn up their battle plan. They also have identified the enemy. The radical Christian right is working hard to destroy the New Age movement, reports an alarmed Dick Sutphin, author of many best-selling New Age books and tapes. Sutphin says that Christian forces of ignorance and intolerance must be defeated. He states that Christians are now trying to censor books in schoolrooms and dictate what magazines convenience stores can sell. Sutphin singles out Christian authors Robert Morey and Constance Cumbie, as well as Christian ministers and evangelists Charles Stanley, former head of the Southern Baptist Convention, Jerry Falwell, James Robinson, Tim LaHaye, Jimmy Swaggart, Pat Robertson, and others of their ilk, branding these men as zealots. 
to combat what he calls the fundamental fascism of these and other Christians, Sutphin and his associates have founded an adversary group named New Age Activists. He describes this group as follows. New Age Activists is a spiritual action group of reincarnation, reincarnation, reincarnationists incorporated, a non-profit, non-taxable educational organization structured to promote peaceful planetary transformation by sharing awareness of metaphysical principles, alerting others of the Christian efforts to block our dreams, and networking New Agers for support programs. Sutfin and his New Age activists evidently will use any and all means at their disposal in, disposal in their war against Christianity. Sutfin himself has stated that New Agers are best at infiltrating society, hinting that much of his organization's organization's aggressive behavior may be concealed behind the scenes. Christians must therefore expect to term a New Age opposition. William Irwin Thompson, founder of the New Age's Lindis Farm Association, which now operates out of the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City, has emphatically stated there is no escaping it. Religious warfare will continue. The Quartus's foundation's the Cordis Foundation's Don Randolph Price speaks of this conflict in stark military terms, calling it inoffensive and announcing that the true believers are now stepping forth from every religion on earth and are now moving into the staging area. The demon spirit, Jual Kul, whom Alice Bailey calls the Tibetan, is quoted as saying that every problem in society is essentially a religious problem and behind all strife is to be found the religious element. But says this demon spirit defiantly, nothing in heaven or hell, on earth or elsewhere, can prevent the progress of the new age, man who has awakened to the clarion call of his own soul. We are experiencing outbreaks of spiritual hostilities in our schools, within the media and entertainment industries, and even within our churches. The business world is not immune from the New Age onslaught either. Incredible though it may seem, the New York Times reported on September 8, 1986, that the previous July, representatives of some of the nation's largest corporations, including IBM, AT&T, and General Motors, met in New Mexico to discuss how metaphysics, the occult, and Hindu mysticism might help executives compete in the world marketplace. At Stanford University's renowned graduate school of business, <laughs> A seminar called Creativity in Business includes such topics as chanting, meditation, the use of tarot cards, and a New Age capitalist. Meanwhile, a recent survey of 500 corporate presidents and company owners revealed that half had sponsored some type of New Age, consciousness raising technique, for their employees. Our nation's military also seems to have become susceptible to New Age influence. In the early 1980s, officers at the Army War College, some of whom were graduates of EST and the Radical Students for a Democratic Society, conducted a study aimed at creating a New Age Army. The study recommended medication for soldiers and training in psychic skills and in magic. Carl A. Roschke Professor of Religious Studies at the University of Denver describes the New Age as the most powerful social force in the country today. He adds, I think it is as much a political movement as a religious movement, and it's spreading into business management theory and a lot of other areas. If you look at it carefully, you see it represents a complete rejection of Judeo-Christian and bedrock American values. Onward New Age soldiers? As we'll discover in the chapters that follow, the early stages of spiritual warfare have been successfully won by the New Age. Now comes the decisive, more ominous stage, the determined effort by the New Age to subvert and take over the Christian churches and to seize complete social and political power. The foundation is now being laid for the Antichrist reign of terror. It is ironic that at this very moment, when so many liberal Christian churchmen seek to remove older songs of worship like onward Christian soldiers from our hymnals, claiming them to be militaristic, a slow but steady drumbeat of violence has begun within the New Age movement. 
This seething undercurrent of violence threatens to openly explode into savage acts once Satan unleashes against mankind all his powers through the Antichrist. A shrewd dictator convinces his subjects that a certain group is a threat to their welfare. This is how Nero and Caligula were able to marshal public rage against the early Christians. This was the ruse Hitler used to inflame the German people against the Jews. Now there are early signs that this same tactic may be employed by New Age masters and the influential publication, Lifetimes, Forum for a New Age. Publisher and editor-in-chief Jack Underhill recently called for the Second American Revolution, which he likened to the New Crusades. There is a new American Revolution brewing today, Underhill writes, and the outcome of it will decide the fate of the world in the next decade. This modern-day conflict can, he says, result in a higher nobility, a more pure idealism. According to Underhill, the fate of the planet and the human race hinges on the outcome of this new revolution. He calls the struggle for New Age spiritual supremacy the biggest war of all times and announces that only full victory can bring freedom to create our own reality. Underhill also advises New Age disciples on how they can achieve this total victory over the enemy. We start the revolution within each of us and work out from there, getting groups of similarly minded rebels together and drafting campaigns to make the enemy surrender, like a general giving an inspirational pitch to his troops. Underhill continues with these combative and dramatic words. In this new age, we are our own commanders and in infantry, truly special forces of a sort that has never been seen at war before. Charge on to the only true victory there is, must be only, that of spiritual liberation. Like the colonists of this country who began this struggle for liberation, we owe it to ourselves to complete it. The fate of the world depends on us. The new age is dead. Serious about what it sees as a special mission for mankind, the conquest of the world for the Christ, the Lord Maitreya. Satan has ignited in his New Age followers a desperate urge to become gods, and he and his demons accuse Christians and Jews of being impediments and stumbling blocks to, God, to man's godhood. Either the Christians and Jews will convert to the New Age faith, or they will have to go. A Declaration of Spiritual War Underhill flatly states this is war. John White has said that survival is at stake and John Randolph Price talks about a spiritual offensive and about breaking up the dark pockets of resistance. Price tells New Agers who are worried that they may not eat. Price tells New Agers who are worried that they may not get to be gods. The salvation of the world does depend on you. Other New Age leaders deceptively use biblical imagery to provoke their followers to action. One group likens the New Age Christ to the first of the four horsemen of the Apocalypse from Revelation 6-2, a rider on a white horse who was given a crown and went forth to conquer. Christian Bible students know that this passage of scripture refers to the coming of Jesus Christ, and the other interpretation amounts to blasphemy. The leaders of the New Age are fully aware that even though many Christian clergy and laymen can be tricked into believing in the plan, a small core of biblical Christians will never acquiesce to the New Age kingdom. These stubborn believers in Jesus and a personal God are the enemy of whom Underhill wrote. These are the dark pockets of resistance that Price says must be smashed. How can these enemies of the New Age best be dealt with? Let's see what Peter Lemsewer premier New Age thinker, speaker, and best-selling author proposes to do about these stubborn Christians as well as the Jews reluctant to support the plan. Referring to the New Age plan to install Satan's man, the Antichrist, on the world throne, Lemassure scathingly notes that there are multitudes of Christians long dazzled by a rabidly otherworldly messianic image who will be affronted at the suggestion that a mere man could ever fulfill that awesome role. Lemassure says that these troublesome Christians will undoubtedly believe the New Age Christ, whom he calls the New David, to be the Antichrist. Christians who know their Bible will indeed recognize the New Age Christ as an imposter, and they'll refuse to worship him as God. Le Monsieur suggests that New Agers will battle the resistors under the banner of their imposter Messiah. It is for the soul of man that the New David will have to fight, he writes. The supporters of this new David must be willing to die, if necessary, to ensure the success of their New Age kingdom. 
It is the new David who will prevail, Le Monsieur confidently asserts. The mass forces of the old age, he says, will be unable to check the headlong rush of the new age.